Welcome to a lesson on function notation. Now that we know a function is a special relation in which each input has exactly one output, we often use special notation to communicate that a relation is a function. The notation is called function notation. For example, here we see y equals f of x. So f of x is function notation, where f of x is the output resulting from applying the function rule f to the input x. So when using function notation, we need to remember that x is the input and f of x is the output, and therefore f of x is equal to y. When we first see this notation though, it's easy to think that this means f times x, but it does not. It's special notation called function notation. As an example, if we were given the function f of x equals two x plus three, the first thing we should recognize is that this is equivalent to the equation y equals two x plus three. But we use this special notation, function notation, to indicate that this equation does represent a function. To find a function value, for example, let's say f of four, we substitute four for x. So f of four is equal to two times four instead of two times x, and then plus three. Well, two times four is eight, so this is equal to eight plus three, which is equal to 11. So we say f of four equals 11. But we should also recognize, but we should also recognize this represents a point on the graph of our function, where the x coordinate is four and the y coordinate is 11. So when we find function values, notice how we're finding y values. Let's take a look at several more examples. Here we're given f of x, and asked to find f of four and f of negative three. So this really comes down to substituting four for x and then negative three for x. So f of four would be equal to, instead of x squared, we'd have four squared. Instead of minus five times x, we'll have minus five times four, and then plus six. And now we simplify this following the order of operations. So we'd first square four, that's 16, and then minus five times four, that'd be minus 20, plus six. So this would be 16 minus 20 is negative four, plus six is positive two. So we can say f of four equals positive two. Which again would represent the point four, two on the graph of this given function. For f of negative three, we'll now substitute negative three for x. So we'd have negative three squared minus five times negative three plus six. It is important that we include parentheses around this negative three. X squared means x times x. So for negative three squared, we do need negative three times negative three, which would be positive nine. So we'd have positive nine. Here we have negative five times negative three, that's plus 15, and then plus six. So this would be nine plus 15, that's 24 plus six is 30. So we would say f of negative three equals 30. Let's take a look at two more examples. Notice in this example, our function is g of t, so the input is t and the output is g of t. So to find g of negative three, we'll substitute negative three for t. But we need to be careful when performing this substitution. We can think of this as the opposite of t squared. So if we substitute negative three for t, we would have negative and then negative three squared plus two times negative three minus 12. So when we begin to simplify here, negative three squared is positive nine, but then we have a negative sign here. So that is going to be negative nine. Then we have plus two times negative three, that's plus negative six or just minus six, minus 12. This would be negative 15 minus 12, that's negative 27. So g of negative three equals negative 27. So when we have an input of t equals negative three, our function value or output is negative 27.